Hey, great day, everybody. Um, I want to welcome you, first of all, and thank you for joining us. Rick is live. Uh, tonight is our Bible study night. I need you to share right now. I need everybody. Uh, I know you got your phone in your hand, so go on uh, and press the share button. Let folks know that Relevant Empowerment Church is live. Let me see. Let me let me get on here uh, and let's see who's sharing. You know these people be snitching on y'all now. They tell, they tell me when you on here, they tell me if you're sharing or not. Go on and share. Go on and share uh as you are uh and we are all participants and responsible uh for getting uh getting the gospel and the word about the gospel out uh, while while i am um uh asking you uh to invite i want to invite those of you who are uh, a part of relevant empowerment church those of you who may not be a part but you've been thinking or considering looking for a church home um, I want to give you a very unique opportunity. I want to let you know that this coming Saturday at 9 a.m., I'll be casting vision uh, about how I see, what I see as it relates to uh, the future of Relevant Empowerment Church, uh, the things that God has downloaded in me to give to you. And then after that, we're going to ask you to do something that you've probably never done before, and that is to be a part, be a part of actually coming into a room, talking out loud about how we rally around that vision, how we grow the church toward that vision so that all roads lead to the cross. Amen. The scripture says that if he be lifted, if he draw all men. And so that is our aim. And we need your participation. We need your help. We need your support uh, in, in doing that. Want to invite everybody. We're going to have prayer uh, this coming Monday. Uh, we have prayer every first and third Monday at 630 at the church in person uh live and in living color uh we're all there together blessing god doing what we uh doing what we love uh and doing what has become a part of our habit hey everybody good to see everybody uh deborah good to see you uh miss renee quentin my man good to see you brother uh claxton hello there uh blessings on each of you again um hey uh minister angie god bless you um, God bless all of y'all again. Share, uh, let folks know that Relevant Empowerment Church is live. I'm getting ready to pray for you. Um, and as I pray for you, I want you to, uh, as best you can, uh, um, figure out how you're going to move all of that stuff out of the way. All the stuff that's got you clouded, all the stuff that's got you stressed, all of the stuff that's got you uh, uh, tripping in some ways, because I want you to believe that the peace and the power of God can come over your life in this moment and do something for you that you have not yet to be able to do for yourself and that is to give you rest that is to give you the ability to know that god got you doesn't matter what it looks like what it sounds like what they said it was like what it ought to be what you think it is god's got you let's pray together believe god and then we're going to get on with the word of the lord father we thank you tonight thank you that uh lord um it's another day's journey hallelujah and God, we're glad about it. Thank you that we made it through the day. Lord, thank you, Father, that we made it through traffic. And thank you, God, that we made it uh, past gas stations that we should have stopped at. Thank you, Lord, that while some of us were riding uh, God on full, somebody was riding on fumes, but you still blessed. Hallelujah. God, while somebody was able to pay their entire bill, God, somebody had to pay on it. And so, Lord, we thank you now for being who you are in our lives. Thank you for being a provider. Thank you that, Lord, you reign on the just as well as the unjust. And tonight, God, we come in submission to who you are. And, Father, we say that we are committed to habits that build our spirit man. We are committed to practicing the things that bring us closer to you and further away from the desires and the inclinations of our flesh. We give you glory now. We thank you that the word is already blessed. Pray that, God, we will be able to receive that word, that it might be a blessing to our lives. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I thank God. And I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Um, I ask y'all to share. I'm, I'm going to share as well. Um, what, what I want you to do really quickly while I got you on, I want you, if you would, 
uh, I want you to type in uh, or, or, or give me a response uh, to this question. I want you, everybody, to type in uh, what you believe is the difference between the soul and the spirit. What is the difference between the soul and the spirit? What is the difference? And you don't have to be long. You can just give, you can just compare and or contrast rather um, two attributes, you know, one attributes, a one-to-one -one ratio is what I'm saying. And so, so what is the difference between the soul and the spirit? Go. What is the difference? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm I'm just I'm just waiting, waiting to see these responses pop up. Because I got to make sure that 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 all of us are on the same page so that we can transition into tonight's teaching uh together. All right. That's all. I just want I just want to see uh see where y'all are. What is the difference? between the soul and the spirit. Hmm? What y'all got? What y'all saying? <laughs> huh? It's, it's quiet. What's going on? Is it, a, is it a delay? Uh, is it a delay? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, Renee. Spirit connection with God. Soul connection with man. All right. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. We are responding to answering the question. Um, um, All right. Evan says everyone has a soul, but a spirit is more intimate. OK. All right. OK. I'll wait. The soul is the natural. The spirit is unnatural. OK. I know I know what you're saying. All right. While, while y'all are doing that, I, I'm going to give you an opportunity to type in uh, your response. But while you're doing that, I want us to be clear that, that we're on the same page. Uh, the, the scholar Watchman Nee uh, helped us to understand through his delineation of man uh, that, that the soul and the spirit are not the same. All right. Uh, that the soul, good, good responses, soul houses our emotions, conscience, uh, our spirit is um, our spirit is our God consciousness. OK, the soul is the flesh. The spirit is tied uh, with the roots of God. OK. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Soul is your heart. Spirit is when God dwells within. All right. All these are good answers, good responses. So, so as we understand that man is comprised of three parts, um, soul or his flesh, rather, we call it the flesh, it's flesh, soul, and spirit. The soul, of course, we understand is uh, where man's, and all of you have given this answer, where man's uh, will and emotions man's volition a man's ability to reason and to think it's what it's what makes us human okay it's what makes us human now our spirit is different in that our spirit is different in that it is in need of regeneration our spirit man had need of regeneration after the fall of adam and because of the fall of adam we needed to be made alive again why so that God could communicate with man. Man, God communicated. His preference was to communicate with us in the spirit. Man, Adam falls. Adam falls. There is no longer 
the ability for God to connect with us. So God went through time to create an, a, a, a way that man's spirit might be a soul rather might be redeemed through his spirit man being made alive, being quickened. OK, last week we talked about the fact uh, that um, the knowledge most lacking today uh, is knowledge about the human spirit. And we talked about the human spirit. We talked about how the human spirit was in need of regeneration because the, the man's spirit, the spirit of man was dead on in upon arrival. When you got here, your soul was uh, 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 yet alive. Your flesh was yet alive. That's why the scripture says man was but a few days old and full of trouble. Why? Because trouble comes with your flesh. Trouble comes in the soulish realm. It comes with your emotions. It comes with bad choices and bad decisions and decisions and choices that are made out of your emotions. But in the realm of the spirit, because there is a good direct connection with God in the spirit, we can't go wrong. We can't go wrong. So man, uh, tonight, I want you to write, uh, write this down somewhere. Man, here it is. Man, man's original state was spirit. Man's original state. He was spirit. He was walking around in the garden. The Bible says that he was created in the image, image of God. John chapter four says that God is a spirit. God is a spirit. So, so man was created with a soul and a, and his image was the spirit of God. So man was born and what is what we know as the inward was really the outward manifestation. Why? The Bible says that man became a living soul, but this was after he had been made in God's image. He'd already been given the image, the spirit, the outer dwelling, the outward manifestation of what of what we now call on the inside. Why do we call it on the inside? Because now God had to put his spirit in us because we no longer because now our flesh has been made alive through the activities of Adam and Eve, their sin, chapter three of, of Genesis. And so because of that, we have to understand that man's original state was spirit. And so God's been trying to get us back to spirit. God's been trying to get us back. And so now the scripture helps us to understand that because man's spirit was in a fallen state, that now God got to do something new. God's got to do something different. God's got to do something else. What are you saying, y'all? But I'm glad you asked y'all. Go to Ezekiel 36. Let's go to Ezekiel 36. Somebody say, work the word. Ezekiel 36. All right. And I want to look at uh, verse 26. Ezekiel 36 and 26. Y'all check this out says matter of fact i'm gonna back up a little bit and i'm gonna start at um at 22 check this out listen to what god says to the house to the house of israel therefore therefore say unto the house of israel thus saith the lord god i do not this for your sake god said i ain't doing this for you this ain't got nothing to do with you. I'm, I'm getting ready to do something new in you, but it ain't even for you at this stage. He says, oh, house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathen, whither you went. How and why? Because we walking in the flesh. We walk in, we walking in our emotions. We walk, we don't walk in the spirit. And so we profane the name of God because we're not in a position to make sound choices because our choices aren't coming from a sanctified place. I'm preaching real good. Verse 23, he says, and I will sanctify my great name, which is profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. 
This is important. He says, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to show everybody that I am God is not going to be because I moved the mountain. It isn't going to be because I gave you new houses. It's going to be because I have come on the inside of you and I have made you somebody that used to be untrustworthy to somebody that is trustworthy. And somebody's going to have to tell God, thank you because of that says, I will sanctify, I will be sanctified in you before their eyes, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I clean you here? Here's what we've been trying to get. Listen to this. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put in you. Yes, God. He says, he says, I'm going to put a new heart in you and I'm going to put a new spirit in you. Oh, I love this. In other words, he says, when my spirit comes on the inside of you and you spend time allowing my spirit to commune with your human spirit. And now your human spirit gets to grow in me, get stronger in me. And because of that, now your human spirit, because of my spirit now has the ability to articulate my will, my way, my desires to your soulish man. Now your soulish man now is not in a situation to where he can drive your decision making. Only your soulish man now takes orders from your spirit man because of or as proxy for the Holy Ghost who now give direct instructions to your spirit to your soul, and now you're not in a position or a situation wondering whether you miss God, whether it is God, or whether it ain't God. Somebody shout, sanctify yourself in me, God. Sanctify yourself in me. Thank you, woman of God. I appreciate that, baby. Uh, uh, watch this. A new heart. Also, will I give you? This is key. He says, I'm going to give you a new heart. He says this, and then he comes and he says, and I, and I will put a new spirit, a new spirit will I put within you. This is good, y'all, because now my I understand that now the new spirit that is in me, shucks, the new spirit that is in me now, the new spirit that is in me is now able to say to my heart, my soul, which wasn't right, which wasn't, which one, as a matter of fact, let me read the rest of this verse to you so that you will understand. He says, a, a, a new heart will I uh, give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Shucks! And I will give you a heart of flesh. He says, the stony heart, I will take away out of your flesh. And I give you a heart. In other words, he says, what you got to understand is that your soul ought to be subject to your spirit. And God says that when I put a new spirit in you, I'm going to take out the old mess. I'm going to take out the brokenness. I'm going to take out the distrust. I'm going to take out what you had not been leaning on. But when you feed your soul, when you feed your emotions, when you don't tell your, your trauma, y'all better hear what I'm telling you. When you don't speak to your trauma, don't you allow a, 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 a uh, uh, where we are currently in popular opinion to make you believe that your trauma got to control you. But the same way that God is giving you the ability to speak to a mountain, God's giving you the ability to speak to your trauma and to tell your trauma, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to be led by you anymore. I'm not going to be driven by what happened in the past. I'm not going to transfer somebody else's sins onto somebody else as their faults. Why? Because God has given me a new spirit that now has influence over my new heart. Yes, God. Hallelujah to your name. Hey, all right. Um, John. John chapter three. Go on and shout. Go on and shout. Go on and shout. Yes, Lord. Go on and shout. John chapter three. God, I feel, I feel last Sunday bubbling up in me. I'm different. 
Why am I different? I'm different because I'm now influenced by something who is someone who is greater than me. I'm now influenced by somebody that can help me get myself together. When I start feeling like folk owe me something, I look to the cross and I remember Jesus paid it all. When I start feeling like somebody owe me some or, 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 or I I should be treated a certain way. I remember that he said to me, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. But I can't be influenced above that which I am able to be influenced. What are you saying, man? I'm saying that I can only be influenced by that which is greater than me. And when I allow my human spirit to be influenced by the Holy Spirit, then and only then can I say to my soul, soul, don't worry because the Lord make a way somehow. All right. John chapter three. Calm down a little bit. Y'all got me riled up. Uh, John chapter three, verse six. Listen to what Jesus says to Nicodemus. Listen, to, listen to this. I, I hope y'all done shared this, man. I hope y'all, Jesus says this to Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, okay? And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, now that which is born of the flesh, it is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, we were born into this world because of the flesh cause uh flesh gave birth a seed of man came in fertilized the egg of a woman and now we were able to come forth but god says that 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 while um you are now born because you're born you're a child of mine this shall not over who this lord uh uh uh, uh you're a child of mine you are a tech nun. In other words, he says, simply because you're here, because you have the uh, uh, ability to ha ha house a soul and the ability to have the, uh, a spirit on the inside of you, you are a child of God. He says, but, but, but while that's good, uh, that ain't where you want to end up. Where you want to be is you want to be in the land uh, 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 where they call you Huios, where they call you son, where they call you daughter, where they call you a mature one in God, where they call you one who is, uh, watch this, heavy on the spiritual. How am I heavy on the spiritual? Because I've been investing in those things which are spiritual. I've been practicing the five, five habits of highly spiritual people to to ensure that my discernment, here it is, uh, ain't paranoia. To ensure that my discernment ain't deflection. To ensure that my prophecy, uh, that if my prophecy is going to go forth, that it ain't coming from a damned place. That if I'm going to speak life into somebody, that I don't speak life with the same mouth, I speak curses. Why? Because I got the ability to be different and to be better. He said, that which is born of the flesh. Is flesh. And because of that, you can only expect to get out of flesh what flesh is. And the Bible says to put no confidence in our flesh. Why? Because don't know there's no good thing that dwells there. So what's born of the flesh is flesh. If I'm born of the flesh, then it makes me flesh. And that means that I produce things of the flesh. I don't care your title or your position. If you spend more time investing into your flesh, into your soulless realm, then you then you do rather into your spirit. I don't care what your title is. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care what your calling is. You will not be able to overcome simple things that arise in both your soul, your spirit, uh, your flesh rather, and in the soulless realm. You won't be able to overcome that stuff because you don't have the arsenal, the fire high power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when I'm born of the Spirit, now I got a fighting chance. 
when, I, when, when I'm born of the spirit. Now, now Ezekiel 36 comes alive in my life. He says, I'll put a new spirit in you. I'll put a new heart in you. You heard David. David even said it in Psalm 51. David says, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. And then Ezekiel comes and we get the prophetic word. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Ah, I hear you, David, speaking loud that God has never intended for us to be without him. Why? So he makes provision for himself to be within us. Why the Bible says that we uh, uh, have in this, this earthen vessel a treasure. Yes, Lord. That in this earthen vessel, that we got a treasure on the inside. The treasure was his spirit. The treasure was his spirit. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. While you're going to 2 Corinthians, let me give you this point real quick. No one born of God sins habitually. Why? Because when you're born of God and, and you're investing, no one born of God sins habitually. Why? Because when we, when we invest and we practice spiritual habits, When we invest and we practice spiritual habits, then it changes the pattern, the algorithm of our desires. It changes. See, let me tell y'all something. This whole idea of algorithms is not about math. It's about, it's about the spirit realm because there's an algorithm in the realm of the spirit. Hear this. That's why you're able to attract folk who got stuff. Hey, T.T. Alma, that's why you're able to attract folk that's got like spirits. Why? Because there's an algorithm in the heavens. That's why certain things and people pop up on your timeline. Why? Because there's an algorithm that has now, hear this, that has now tracked what you do, how you do it, what time you do it, what it is. And so it ain't that somebody's listening to you. It ain't that somebody heard you. No, there's an algorithm. And so in the realm of the spirit, there is an algorithm. And in the realm of the spirit, when your heart becomes bent to the will of God, when your will is bent towards the will of God, now your heart's desires, now your heart heart's desires, they are now, understand that they are now bent towards God. They now flow on a different algorithm. Now, they, now, now when you start to testify like the old folks did, when the old people used to declare the things that I used to do, hey, I don't do them anymore. The places that I used to go, I don't go anymore. Things that I used to want, shut up. I don't want them anymore. Why? Because I'm on a different algorithm. Why? Because I'm on a different wire. I'm in a different frame now. I'm in a different mindset now. I don't even think like that no more. So I thought I wanted, I don't even want it anymore. Why? Because my stuff has been changed. And so now when the Bible declares in Psalm that he'll give me the desires of my heart, he is saying that once I put my spirit in you, when I give you a new spirit and I put a new heart on the inside of you. Baby, your heart won't beat the same. Your heart won't want the same stuff. Why? Because now the desires that you have are desires that I have for you. And so now anything that God wants for me, I want it just as bad. You ought to shout glory right now, God, because we walk in heavy in the spirit. Shout glory. Shout glory. We're almost done. Almost done. Second Corinthians chapter seven. Ah. Hallelujah to your name. Second Corinthians. Yes, God. Chapter seven. Listen to this. Because this is what this is what we this is what we we get it confused. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. God. Yes, Lord. This is what we get it confused. We think that because we got saved, we got filled with the Holy Ghost, we got tongues, and we got all these other manifestations that we don't, we don't need no more work. 
Oh, contrary move for you. Uh, um, <laughs> I had a Sheena moment just now. I feel like there was some Sheena do. Listen, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have these great and wonderful promises, beloved. Listen to him now. He's saying, now we got all this stuff. We got all we, we we got treasure in us because we got and we got a promise in God that He's gonna come back to redeem us, body, soul, and spirit. So then now we will become new creations according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Therefore, since we have these great and wonderful promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, completing holiness living a consecrated life, a set apart for God's purpose in the fear of God kind of life. Make room for us in your hearts. We have wronged no one. Listen to Paul. He says, we have corrupted no one. We have cheated no one. I don't say this to condemn you. He says, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. Great is my confidence in you. Great is my pride and boasting. He gets here and he is talking about a people who have accepted the spirit of God. And now the church at Corinth is getting a different kind of level. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm done for the night. But what I want you to understand is that when we are walking heavy spiritually, it allows us to be able to turn the tide of our lives. It allows God to be able to hurry things to us because we stay in the right algorithm. We stay in the right place. I'm getting ready to pray for you. Um, and I'm trusting that we'll see y'all on Saturday at nine o'clock. I believe God's going to really do some things on that day. It's going to be a monumental day for our church. It's going to be a historic day for our church. You should not want to miss it. You should not want to miss it. Uh, I, I, I'm praying uh, that you can that you can be in the house. You should not want to miss it. And then I'm I'm asking you to show up on Sunday morning after that, so we can bless God, so we can water that seed from Saturday. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you now for your people, and I pray in the name of Jesus that you would move on the behalf of those who are on this live. I lift up Jaquita to you, God. You know her need. I pray that as a family, Lord, that we come together to see her need met. I bless you, God, that you have given us the, a ministry of reconciliation. And so, Father, I pray that as you put reconciliation in us, Lord, I pray that there be reconciliation, Father, for your people. I pray for reconciliation for those who are a part of our church. I pray for reconciliation for those who are no longer a part of our church. I pray for reconciliation in the body of Christ. I pray for reconciliation among preachers. I pray for reconciliation among husbands and wives and sisters and brothers and relatives and uncles and aunts and cousins. God, I pray, God, that you would bring your people back to you to a reconciled place. Thank you for your spirit that allows us to be new, to walk in the newness of God, to claim the things of, to claim the things of God and to be able to speak those things that be not and watch them manifest in the natural as they are. Now, God, I give you glory. I pray for those who will sow into this ministry. God, that you would bless them. Um, and that their needs will be met and that they would know that it was because they've been sowing in the good ground. I give you glory tonight and honor in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, y'all. I love y'all to life. God bless.